Have you ever worked super hard on a project that you're really excited to share with the world? Gone to hit render, all to find out that your computer says it's gonna take either hours or days or weeks to complete the job? <laughs> Unfortunately, it's probably something we've all run into at one time or another. Now, over the past few years as a freelancer, I have had to render some pretty beefy animations that I could not have produced on my own two machines here. So I wanna share with you what I've done in the past to be able to deliver those. And for those of you who are curious about rendering on a render farm, how it works, that's what this video is gonna be about. I'm gonna walk you through what it's like and what steps you would take to work with a render farm such as uh, Keyshot Farms. In fact, that's the only render farm I've ever used. So that's the one I'm familiar with and that's the one I'm gonna show you how to use today. This is not a paid or sponsored post, but it's one that I thought would be interesting to do especially because there's not a lot of information on actually how to use a render farm out there. So without further ado, let's dive in. All right, so here on screen, I have a key shot scene from a personal project from a while ago, and it's a pretty heavy scene. If I unpause it, you'll see that the lamp is made up of a multi-layer optic material, and then we have a physical light inside there, and we even have a diffuser that's made of, I think again, like dielectric material. There's a metal braided cable that runs through a cloudy plastic sleeve. So there's a lot going on. And then when we get into render settings, you know, we need to render um, with enough ray bounces. I've got caustics on because if we don't, of course the light won't transmit through the materials and render properly. Uh, I also want this to look realistic. So I've got depth of field going on with the camera. And uh, again, there's just a lot in this scene that makes it take a while to render. We're going to render this out using as much horsepower as I have. Now I have, I'm fortunate enough to have a pretty beefy computer. I've got Keyshot says 64 cores that it will take advantage of. If I had a machine with say 32 cores, then this image would take twice as long to render on my machine. If you have a laptop say that has eight cores, it would take eight times longer to render on your laptop than it would on this machine. Now again, we're gonna talk about network rendering and what I wanna do is show you how long this takes to render on my computer, and then we'll run it on the render farm and see how that compares. As far as my settings, I'm gonna render this out as an EXR file. I'm gonna render this at a resolution of 2048 by 2560. I wanna render all the render passes. Now this does not slow down the renderer. If we look in the image style tab, you can see I'm using some adjustments, little basic adjustments for tone mapping, a little bit of color adjustment, some denoise. I'm not using the Firefly filter, just the denoise, and then a little bit of bloom just to get this feel, this vibe that I'm after. And at this point, uh, I'm going to render also up to 350 samples. I'm using the maximum samples setting because that's what I'm most comfortable using. And I came to that conclusion that 350 would be enough by using a region render. So you can hit Control Shift R on your keyboard to bring up a region and just draw a box around an area that's taking a long time to resolve. And then in your heads up display, which you can open which, with the H key, you watch the samples number go up. Once the region within the box looks good and smooth, then check the number in the samples, and that's the number you would use for your final rendering. I'm going to go ahead and use all 64 cores that my machine has at 350 samples and see how this turns out. And then later again, we'll run it on the network rendering and see how it compares. Another thing I'm gonna point out in the bottom right-hand corner, we'll see the progress of this image, how many samples have been rendered, how much time has elapsed, and what percentage uh, this is throughout the completion cycle. If I wanna see the entire image, I can click this 100 icon to zoom to 100, or sorry, the icon next to it, the zoom to fit icon. With that, I will uh, return to you once this has finished rendering and we'll see how long it's gonna take. Okay, so I am looking at the completed rendering that rendered on my home computer. It took about an hour and four minutes. Overall, it looks pretty good. A couple things I noticed though, unfortunately, we've got some noise going on from the caustics. Now, I chose to render this in product mode and product mode does not handle these caustics quite as well as something like interior mode. So. If being able to render uh, clean caustics is a priority, that may be something 
uh, I would reconsider if I ran this again. Then again, I prefer the look of product mode, the, the resulting image it creates. It just, I like that look and I'm willing to let this render longer if that's what's required to get these caustics to clean up. Unfortunately, there was no way I would know these caustics would look this way before I uh, submitted the job. So now when I send this to the render farm, I may opt to render a higher sample count to produce a clean image. Now, of course, I want an apples to apples comparison to see how quickly the render farm will render the same image without changing the render settings. So we will at least run one identical job on the render farm to see how that compares. So now that we've taken a moment to look at the image that rendered locally on my machine, I'm gonna walk you through the process of getting set up on network rendering, and then we'll submit some jobs and see how those turn out. Now, before I can send any jobs to a render farm, I need to actually rent some time on a render farm. So I'll visit keyshotfarms.com, head on over to their contact page, and then fill out the intake form that they have there. That way they know I'm interested. So shortly after I submitted the form on the Keyshot Farms website, I got a, a fairly generic email that explained how some things work, um, some of the rates and stuff like that. I replied to that email with uh, what I wanted to actually rent from them. And then shortly after that, Steve got back to me saying, yep, that works. Uh, I have the farm set up for you. And he explained that I need to install the network rendering program that's appropriate for my workstation with a link to the software downloads and then also some instructions. So he attached uh, two PDFs. One explains what the network monitor is and how to use it, but I'm gonna show you that in a second. And the other one is how to set up the client. And all this does is tell you basically how to get KeyShot network rendering installed on your computer so that you can submit a job to the hardware that's at KeyShot Farms. The other information that this email contains is connection settings. So this is a monitor host name and monitor port. These are basically like a physical address. They're how your computer is gonna know where to go, how to end up pointed at the correct computers at Keyshot Farms. And then you get a unique username and password for an extra layer of security. I followed the instructions in the email from Keyshot Farms to get the installer for Keyshot network rendering. So I'm gonna go ahead and install that on my machine. And then once I've completed the installation process, I'll walk you through how to get this all set up. So now that Keyshot network rendering has been installed on my computer, I get to decide what role my computer is going to take. We've got worker, which means it's a render node on the network. That means your computer will actively contribute to the total overall available cores that can be used to render. The manager role allows you to make changes to the network, to assign users and change jobs, things like that. You can be a, a manager and a worker, which means your computer will be used to render on the network, but you or your computer will also be a manager giving it high level permissions. And finally, you have monitor, which means you can still submit jobs, you can access the network, and you can also watch jobs as they're being processed. Now, in this case, I'm going to leave this set to monitor only, and this is the option that you would likely use in most cases. Now, in today's case, we're just gonna be monitor only and hit done. So I've pulled up a Keyshot 11 network monitor and automatically Keyshot network connection dialog popped up. Now, if you can't get this window to pop up on its own, just go under file and then connection settings and you should be able to access it. So in this case, I wanna connect to the hardware that I have rented over at Keyshot Farms. So we're gonna find the manager host name and the email I've got here. I'll just copy that and then I'm gonna switch and paste it into the correct box. And then same thing goes for the monitor port. I'll copy those numbers and paste those into the box there. It will then ask for a username and password. So I'm gonna copy the username that was issued to me and the password as well. And I'll paste those in. And then once I hit log in, I'll click log in. And if I have successfully connected, we will see down below a worker count as well as the number of cores that I have access to. After establishing a connection with Keyshot Farms Render Farm, I want to submit this job. So I'll click on my render button in the toolbar and then go make sure that my render settings have not changed. I want my output size to be the same, my file format to be the same. And then in my options, I want to change my mode from default, which is what I would use when rendering on my home computer to network. I want to also make sure that I do not change my maximum samples because I want an apples to apples comparison. So from here, all I need to do is click on send to network and we should see our network monitor pop up. Sure enough. Now we can see the job is being submitted. 
The status is set to archiving. That is uh, when Keyshot packages up the current project into a KSP to be sent over to the render farm. So at this time, we see the status is set to sending, and that simply means my file is being sent over the internet. How long that takes is gonna depend on A, how big the KSP is, and B, how fast my internet speed is. So while we're looking at this, and while the job starts to render, I'll talk a little bit about what is going on on screen here in the network monitor. First off, we have a job ID. This will be unique for each job. We also have the name of the file. We have the status, and the status is gonna change throughout the course of the job. It started out as archiving, then sending, then receiving, then processing, and then of course when it's done, it'll package it all up and send it back to me. We have the progress, which updates in real time, of course. We have the username, which is who I'm logged in to Keyshot Farms as. We've got the host name. This is the computer I submitted the job from. We've got a uh, type, which is set to image. If this were an animation, it would say animation, of course. Then we have tasks. Each job is broken into smaller tasks. And the reason for this is because that's how multiple computers can process the same job at the same time. So by breaking this image into 50 tasks, each worker on the network can perform one task at a time and then compile those to finish it all up and put them all together. The render time is how much time has elapsed or how long this has been rendering for on the network. And then we have an estimated time remaining. I'm gonna throw this out here and say the estimated time remaining varies. It is not always uh, the most accurate, but it's a good ballpark estimate. And then finally we have mode, which is set to CPU. So this job's being rendered on the CPU, not the GPU. So what else do we have here? We have four workers currently working on this job for a total of 512 cores. So these are pretty powerful computers that we're using to process this job with. If we go over to the worker status button or bar, we can see each computer on the network and how it's being used to complete this job. So in this case, we have information about each of the workers. We can see they're all rendering. They each have 128 cores. So these are, again, pretty high-end computers. And then we can see the percentage of progress they've made on each task that they're doing. We also have the number of tasks that they've worked on and the number of tasks, I guess, that they're assigned. I'll check back in in a couple of minutes when this is processed and we will compare the results. So the first job I submitted is a little more than halfway done. We can see that I submitted that at 350 samples and I actually submitted a second job at 700 samples, twice the samples count. Uh, in theory, it'll take twice as long to render because of that, but it should look a lot smoother. While I have these two jobs rendering or one waiting to be rendered and one rendering, I did wanna point out a couple more things you can do within the Keyshot Network Monitor. If you're using network rendering, there's a good chance you're gonna have a lot of jobs here stacking up. And what you can do is you can right click on any job that's running and you can either pause it and then later resume it, which is quite cool. You can also decrease or increase priority. Changing priority on jobs will affect what gets moved up in the queue or down in the queue depending on its importance. The other thing that's cool is you can filter down to just your jobs. Because I'm the only user here, all these jobs are mine. So clicking on my jobs does not change anything. But if you and say uh, your coworkers or some other group of people are using or sharing the same network, you can filter just down to your jobs, which are cool, as well as the jobs that are in progress or completed. All right, so in a few minutes, I'll check back in with you and we will compare the results of rendering on the network versus what I achieved on my home computer. All right, so both of the images that we submitted to the render farm have completed. The first one in just under 15 minutes, that was rendered at 350 samples. The second one, just over 30 minutes, rendered at 700 samples. All right, so let's open these images in Photoshop to make some quick comparisons and then discuss the results. First off, we have the image I rendered locally on my own machine without network rendering. It took one hour, four minutes at 350 samples on 64 cores. Next, we have the image I rendered on Keyshot Farm's render farm, also at 350 samples. It took just under 15 minutes and it's nearly identical, which is good. We want the same results coming off the network that we're seeing on our own machine. Finally, we have the image I rendered on Keyshot Farm's at 700 samples. It took just over 30 minutes and the caustic noise is a bit finer and a little less noticeable, but still present. So the benefit here, of course, is that you can get a lot more rendering done if you have access to a render farm or network rendering. Anytime I need to render an animation or high volume images, 
I'll typically rent time on Keyshot Farms, which keeps my home computer free for use. Of course, the more cores you rent, the more expensive it is, but what makes sense will depend largely on your budget. Finally, to address the topic of scaling. So on your computer, if you double the cores, you'll cut the render times in half, assuming you keep all your render settings and resolution the same. This is an example of 100% linear scaling. Now, depending on the scene complexity, I've seen Keyshot's network rendering scale anywhere between 50 and 95%. And while that is a really big range, caustics and global illumination have been shown to impact render scaling the most. So the more complex a scene and the more intensive the render settings, the more likely you are to deviate from pure linear scaling. This is also likely to change as Keyshot network rendering improves. So there you have it. Hopefully this video demonstrates the key benefits of network rendering, also how to use a render farm. If you wanna check out Keyshot Farms, visit the link below. If you have any questions on network rendering, just drop them in the comments so either I or Keyshot Farms can answer them. And until next time, happy rendering.